real. How do you feel? Everyone, please welcome the pastor with a word from the Lord, the present, the present. Amen. 
But he did that one bad deed, that negative deed, right? And that's all that, he, that we remember about him. We don't remember the good things that he did. I mean, he did do some good things while he was in office, my beloved. But we think about the negative. Do you know that it takes five positive uh, actions to negate one negative action? And that's because we hardwired to see things in the negative. We hardwired to live in the past. Come on now. We hardwired to, to kind of uh, be aware of the future. And this is something that happened to us during the time when we were coming up uh, uh, in, before we had policemen, before we had uh, 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 governments, you know, when we used to live in the villages and uh, we had to protect our families. We always was watching out, always mindful, always watching. This morning, my beloved, what I want us to look at is living in the present. Here we see that Paul is telling the Philippians that it doesn't matter what situation he is in, he has always learned how to be content. And the reason that I see that Paul is being content in whatever situation he is in is because he is living in the present. He's not thinking about his past. He's not thinking about um, how he used to, what, persecute the church. He's not thinking about how uh, um, maybe the, uh, he got teased at school when he was younger. He's not thinking about the future. Now that he's on the Christian band, that he knows that what Rome is going to come, uh, and the Sadducees and the Pharisees are going to come and take his life. He's not thinking about that. Paul is living in the present. He says, whatever situation I am in, I am content. My beloved, we need to learn how to live in the present yes. and not the past. You know, the past, that, that voice that tells us, you know, uh, where, where, where your parents may have told you, for those parents who are not good parents, that you ain't going to be anything, you know? Or you had the students in school saying that you're not going to be anything, that you were a square, that you were uh, an oak, that was the name and they used to use in my day, amen, uh, um, that you're no good when we live in that past. Come on now, it haunts us. It chases after us, and when we become what? We become powerless because we're living in the past yes. and not the present. It's either we're living in the past or the future, because when we think about the future, we think about, well, you know, I gotta get my electric bill paid this week, uh, the gas company sent me a nasty letter, uh, I gotta pay my taxes, you know. We're thinking about future things. But what we need to understand is that what we have is what we have right now, is the present. Yes. We need to focus on the present. Yes. We need to focus on Jesus. Scripture tells us that we need to what? We need to think about him, meditate on his word day and night. That means continuously, my beloved. That means without ceasing, without stopping. When we look at scripture, we also see that Jesus shows an example of being present. If we were to go to Luke chapter 8, around the 45th verse, Jesus asked, who touched you? You see, Jesus was aware of his present situation. He could feel the rays of the sun upon his skin. He could feel the wind coming down out of the valley, moving every hair of his hand and his arm and his legs. He could smell the aromas coming from the stables nearby as the crowds thronged around him. He could tell that the woman in front of him had just cooked fresh bread this morning. He could, he could smell the dough upon her hands. He was living in the present. He knew that the men to his right had just came out of the field because they smelled earthly. He knew uh, that the crowds were coming around him because he could smell the sweat and the must that was around him. He was aware of his present situation. He wasn't thinking about Calvary, the cross, that he knew that he had to go to, that he knew that death was coming sure to him. He wasn't thinking about the glory that he had just left when he came off of his father's throne. He was in the present. Well, how do you know he was in the present, Pastor? Because when he was walking through the streets and the crowds were around him, some woman pushed through the crowd. Some woman who had been sick with an issue of blood. 
She had pushed through the crowd, and, and I dare to say that Jesus felt the parting of the crowd and the wind blowing upon him. He knew that woman was coming. He knew that woman uh, needed a uh, healing power. Not only that, Jesus could feel the power that God, his Father, had placed within him. It was radiating, it was beaming in him, it was filling him up. Yes. But when that woman came through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment, he said, who touched me? You see, he was living in the present. There are so many things that we miss, my beloved, because we don't stop. We heard this oftentimes and smell the roses. We don't take advantage of the things that we have in life. We don't uh, 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 breathe in the air that God gave us this morning. Feeling the air going through our nostrils and down into our lungs that God provided for us. Feeling that exhalation when the air comes out moist and warm, and warm by our bodies that God has given to us. We don't feel the wind blowing around us. We don't feel the rays of the light around us. Uh, the past couple of weeks, I mean, past couple of days, we all said it was hot. But we didn't stop to enjoy the heat, my beloved. What do you mean, enjoy the heat? <laughs> Just sit and enjoy the heat that God provided for you. Yes. That you were able to feel that heat. That you were able to tell the difference between hot and cold. God gave you that ability, my beloved. Because six months from now, we won't be saying what? It's cold. Enjoy. Live in the present. Enjoy one another in the present. Amen. When you're around your family, when you're around your wives and your husbands and your children, enjoy them in the moment. Because tomorrow is not promised. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you that you care for them. Tell them uh, how you feel about them. Enjoy that moment. Tomorrow's not promised. Living in the present, my beloved, we can see the manifestation of the power of God. Living in the present, my beloved, we can see the love that God has for us. But we have to learn how to what? Live in the present. And as Jesus uh, felt this power come out of him, and he said, who touched me? Uh, well, you know, old Peter, amen, said, Lord, you got all these people around you. Well, you everybody touched you. What are you talking about? But because he was in the present, Jesus was in the present, he knew exactly what happened. Yes. He felt the power that God has given him come out. And this woman was healed from her issue of blood. Yes. The power of God, that same power that Jesus had that day, my beloved, you too have. If you just stop and live in the present. Yes. I told you guys last week that when we went to the um, Dominican Republic and we went up into the village, that the people were happy. And I come to the conclusion that they were so happy because they were living in the present. They were living right where they were, in the present. They were enjoying what God had given them. And yes, the Dominican Republic is a Christian country. Amen. So they know about God. Amen. They were enjoying the sunshine that God gave them. They were enjoying the dirt roads that God gave them. They were enjoying that they had a thatched roof over top of their head. They were enjoying that, that they couldn't drink the water that came from the river, but they could wash their clothes and they could wash their dishes. And they were enjoying the fact that God had provided them with a jug of drinking water. They were enjoying that. They were enjoying the, the bugs, amen, that were flying around. Amen. They were enjoying everything because they lived in the present. We here in the Western world are so busy worrying about amassing large sums of wealth. Uh, we're, we're worried about that. It, you know, we have to get this wealth. We have to get this money. We have to get this right now in order for us to be happy. But wealth, how many of you know, does not make you happy? As a matter of fact, you get some money and you find out how many people are going to come after you trying to alleviate you of that money. Wealth doesn't make you happy. 
Paul here is telling them, you know, I've learned how to live in abundance, and I learned how to live when I don't have anything. I learned how to be content in whatever situation I am in. Can you imagine that? We're so busy complaining because the Wi-Fi went out. Come on now. We're so busy complaining because you know, it was a little hot in the house. Come on now. But how many of you know that that was a perfect opportunity for us to commune with God, to understand that He is there with us in the present? I told you guys before that God is not a God of the past. He's not even a God of the future. He is a God right now of the present. Yes. He is in this place right now. He is in you right now in the present. Yes. All we need to do is stop, come on now, and smell the roses. And we know that the life of Paul was a, a, a life that was filled with a lot of contention. Paul had been thrown in jail. He had been shipwrecked many times. He had even been killed, my beloved, at one point, but he was resurrected. All this Paul says, I have learned how to be content in. We need to learn to be in the present. And he says, what? I found the secret. Paul said, I, I found the secret, y'all. I know what the secret is to being content. Jesus is in the present. Whatever we need, God will provide. Yes. Come on now. Not what we want, but what we need, He will provide. He will provide a roof over our head. He will provide food in our bellies. And, and we in the Western world, world need not to complain about what we eating about because, you know, we all are weak. Amen. We all are a little heavy, so we, we haven't missed any meals over here in the Western world. Come on now. But we complain because, you know, I didn't have any steak last night, but you had peanut butter and jelly. My, my, my. You complain because I didn't have any lobster last night, uh -uh, but you had that tuna fish can in the cupboard. Come on now. You complain because, you know, you didn't have your favorite dessert, but you had an apple sitting on the table. Come on now. God provided. Yes. You didn't take advantage. Why? Because you weren't living in the present. You were thinking about the future, that lobster dinner, you know, or the past, in my case, that lobster dinner that I had back in the Dominican Republic. Come on now. Instead of enjoying what God has for me today. That's the problem. That's the answer to the secret. That we need to enjoy what God has given us. God has given us this place that we can worship Him in spirit and truth. We need to enjoy it. We need to worship Him. We need to praise Him. We need to come through those doors with an attitude of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for being in my life. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with your grace and your mercy. We need to live in the present. Uh, I say that most Christians don't praise God like they ought to because they're living in the past. They're worried about somebody talking about them. Come on now. They're worried about uh, uh, what they might say about them in the future. Uh, you know the story about Shouting John, right, right? Yes. Uh, we actually had a Shouting John, or have a Shouting John in Second Antioch, my home church. And John would praise God wherever he was. Whatever tune he was in, that's the tune he was going to praise God in. And it wasn't the tune that everybody else was on, but he was praising God and didn't care who was looking at him. That's how we need to be. We need to praise God no matter what we think other people are thinking about. Living in the present, we can praise God with what? All of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls. And we just live in the present. Yes. Paul said, I, I found the secret. Jesus is in the present. Jesus is with me now. And he will provide me with everything that I need. Living in the present, my beloved. Feel the air as it's blowing across your body right now. Live in the present. Take the breath that God has given you right now, deep in. Living in the present. Can you feel, can you feel the Lord? Can you feel the Spirit? 
feel it living with you. Everything you feel right now, from the weight of your body and your seat, is from God. Every pain that you may feel in your body right now, God is letting you know that you're alive. Yes. Can you feel it? Live in the present. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about yesterday. Live in the now. That's the secret. That's the secret that Paul wanted to tell the church of the living no matter what struggles I may have gone through, no matter what trials I may lay ahead, I have learned the secret of contentment. And that's to live to live in the present. Thank you, Lord. We thank you with all of our hearts and all of our minds, Lord God, right now in the present. We thank you for this moment of life that you have given us, Lord God, that we can praise you, Father. We can praise you in spirit and in truth. Father God, as we take in this moment, as we smell the fragrance, Lord God, as we hear the sounds, Lord God, as we, we feel your presence in this place, Lord God. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, for you are truly worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun this morning until the going down of the same. We glorify you, Lord God. We praise you. We uplift your name. For there is no name higher in heaven or earth that shall be praised. Father, for your word said that one day that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good.
forming us, Lord God, of, of the dust of the earth and putting that breath of life within us, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 I don't want to assume that everyone in the sound of my voice has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Preachers preach the word of God and Deacons testify about the word of God and Christians tell people about the word of God for one goal. And that's for those who do not know God, that they can come to understand this God of all creation. If there's someone out there today in the sound of my voice who has never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, for we have all sinned and fallen short of that glory, God is willing to pour out his grace and his mercy upon you with using from his son, Jesus Christ. Is there someone today who wants to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life, that want to give their life to Jesus? Now is the time. You need to live in the present. Come on now. You need to give your life to him right now because tomorrow is not a promise. Yesterday is gone and past. The only thing you have is right now, today, this very moment. Is there someone out there in the sound of my voice who wants to give their life to Jesus. Now is an opportunity. If you answered in affirmative and said, yes, I do, I need you to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, only saved by your grace and your mercy. Father, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, who went to the cross on Calvary that day, and die for my sins. Hang the debt that I owe you, Lord, that no longer am I bound by the law, death, hell, and the grief. But now, Lord God, I am a citizen of heaven. And I acknowledge that Jesus did rise on that third day with all power in his hand. No longer do I have to worry about death, but I know that I have resurrection. Because Jesus rose on that third day. If you prayed this prayer with me, today, today is your birthday. You have been reborn again. Glory, hallelujah. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, saying, another one of your children have come home. I implore you, I beg of you to find a Bible-believing church somewhere where you can continue this walk through life with this man. Paul Jesus. My second call is for church membership. We are not perfect people here at God's church, but it's through our imperfections that God's perfect word comes forth. Would you like to cast your lot here at God's church? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Let us pray. Father God, we cannot thank you enough. We ask, Lord God, that you would look in on the sick and the shedding of all your branches of Zion this morning. Every bedridden Christian, every Christian who woke up this morning and painfully could not get to the house of worship, every Christian who has a heavy heart this morning, Lord God, every Christian uh, that seems like they're going through uh, uh, something in this thing called life, we ask that you would look upon them right now, Lord God. Father, that you would show your healing power in their lives. Show them that you have never left them nor forsaken them. That you are right there with them, Lord God, carrying them through these trials and tribulations. Let them live in the present and feel your holy power on them right now. That they can show the world of your healing power and say, look what Jesus has done for me. Father, we send this prayer to you in the mighty the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and all of God's beautiful children. Say amen. 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 Let's give God a hand praise in this place. At this time, we're going to have Minister Michael Henderson come lead us in our ministry of giving. Remember, my beloved, you can't be God's giving, no matter how hard you try.
Thank you for that word, Pastor. Well, well needed. Our offer story scripture this morning can be found in the book of Psalms. Psalm 96, starting at the seventh verse. Psalm 96, starting at the seventh verse. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. He judges the peoples fairly. So ends the reading of God's word. What shall I say to you? 
Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoever, whosoever, shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that hath eaten and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not concerning the Lord's body. So ends the reading of God's word. Holy Communion is the, the one thing that holds us together as the body of Christ that we share. It is the one practice that you will find in all varieties of Christianity. What is communion? It is the fellowship of believers by which they gather together to remember the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, we want to honor and worship you in a way that has been prescribed and that is acceptable to you. And so we come to this sacred table, this table of the Lord that we have been taught by your word to do in remembrance of him, who by his power and through his blood reconciled us to a new life, having cleansed us of our sins, Father, we confess to you now that we will always need your grace and forgiveness. As we eat this loaf and drink this cup, we do remember him and the price paid for our salvation. We pray that our obedience will be as sweet smelling to you as the anointing oil that Mary put on the feet of our Lord centuries ago. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you will accept our bodies in obedience and worship. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.